Good morning to the garage. And uh, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to, welcome back to the Teslas. Yeah, we got two of them. He's back, he's back. He was gone for a while, but he's back. We're also back. Ah, yes, yes, the Tesla guys, the Tesla. Good morning, it's 722, I'm heading to work. And uh, well, yesterday, I think we had the biggest snowstorm of this winter season. So um, luckily we got these adjustable cup holders for this nice giant, you can't really see it because it's glass, but um, oh, there we go, look at that. It's a little messy down there, but okay. Well, let's get some heat in the end. Oh wait, no, we don't have an engine. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, because because we had the biggest uh, snowfall of this winter season, Kyle, why don't you get out there and do some donuts? Well, you know what, guys? You know, I, I, was, I was this close to doing some donuts. You see, I got up yesterday, and I sat in my apartment and looked at the snow, and that's about as close as I got, yeah, unfortunately. But look, look at this. The roads are pretty clear, but I mean, we got snow for days here. Not for days, but I'll be curious to see how long it lasts, how quickly it melts. It was melting pretty quickly yesterday, just with the sun out. It, it wasn't even above 32, but it was really dripping. I think we got like eight, eight or so inches at least here. Not bad, not bad. Be honest with you guys, the real reason I didn't get outside and do donuts in my Tesla, A, I didn't want to get stuck. You see, I, I, I still, I still have bald all season tires on, on the back of my car. And well, to be honest, a rear wheel drive car in the snow to begin with isn't great. And having bald tires on the back where all the power and torque goes, it's even worse. I, I, I unfortunately did not get out there. The other issue that I run into is the fact that I'm at work all day. So by the time I get off in the winter, it gets dark at four. That's that's definitely one of the drawbacks of winter time. The days are so freaking short. I don't have time to film after I get off work, whereas in the summer, you have until like 9.30 p.m. or 10 o'clock at night because, well, it just never, the sun never sets. In the winter time, kind of SOL. So uh, yeah, that's another problem with the winter time. It's tough for me to uh, get these vlogs in because by the time I get off, it's dark out here and you can't see me. Anyways, we're heading in right now, so I don't I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get something in after work, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But anyways, guys, check out all this snow. Yeah, buddy. Oh goodness guys, it hasn't been plowed. Ready for the traction control light? Oh, there it is, top left, the yellow. Ooh wee. <laughs> yeah, needless to say, it's uh, it's spinning, it's spinning. All right, ooh, ooh, there we go. We got a little bit more traction control kicking in. Anyways, we're heading into work. Guys, the Huracan, the Huracan. It's even all bundled up with its car cover. But doesn't it still look so good? Oh my goodness. One day guys, one day. Well, maybe a Gallardo first and then maybe like an Aventador, but dreams, dreams and aspirations, you gotta have them. Six and a half hours later. Real quick, I just wanna say that this paint does look phenomenal in the sunlight. It's, uh, it's not too bad. It's got a little, it's got a nice sparkle to it, but uh, it's still not too, uh, too flashy. Anyways, guys, welcome back to the Tesla. You know, today, oh gosh, look how dirty this thing gets in the snow already. So today, I wasn't really sure where I was going to go with this video, to be completely honest. Had, had no idea what I wanted to film, what I was doing. But while I was at work, um, one of my viewers, so thank you very much for posting this comment, uh, they asked if I could do a more in-depth like review and show off the infotainment system to see how laggy the screen is. Um, so I would be more than happy to. So thank you for, for posting that question. Uh, you know, if anybody ha wants to see anything or, or has any other questions 
about anything, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll answer or potentially make a video about it. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. I am going to show you the infotainment system. I'm just gonna run through some basic options. You can see how slow or fast it is uh, at reacting. And um, yeah, we're just gonna go check that out. So, well, I would say let's roll, but I'm in my car and here's the infotainment screen literally right here. So anyways, let's, let's get started. All right, so first things first, the car is off right now. If I put my foot on the brake pedal, that pops up fairly instantaneously. One, two, three, four. I'm just saying not, that's not my code, but if I hit allow, that's how quickly it starts up. So fairly quickly, as you can see on the driver's dash, um, everything is pretty much already loaded in on this screen anyways. Sorry guys, that, that helicopter's a little loud right now. Let's, let's let it pass, go ahead, go ahead. Yep, still flying over, still flying over. Yeah, just, just went on that. Okay, anyways, so moving on. Let's go ahead and put it, ah, we'll leave it in park at first, uh, just to kind of see how it goes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do real quick is uh, just enter a navigation. So I'm actually gonna do a further destination to show how long it can take sometimes to load a longer trip, which isn't that big of a deal in the scheme of things because what it is doing is it's actually trying to figure out what superchargers you need to stop at and for how long. Okay, so if I tap navigate, so we're given this screen and right here, if we want to input something, let's do, um, First Street, Jersey City, and hit enter. So it's gonna search for it, and here we go. Okay, so it already found it. Um, that's how quickly that loaded. Um, so as, just a side note, I am running on uh, 3G with full bars. Uh, this car does not have a 4G radio antenna. It's, it's a 3G network. I don't know if it's Tesla's, or if they use somebody else's, I'm sure somebody will comment. My understanding would be is that they use somebody else's. Anyways, this pops up. Um, let's tap navigate, boop, and it's gonna load the route. Um, so that was actually, okay, fairly quick. So it brings up this list of superchargers. It's finding superchargers for my trip. So typically if I'm going on a longer trip, I kind of know where I'm heading and you can put this in and just start moving while it's loading. Um, I really don't know how long it typically takes because, well, I don't go on super long trips too often and I kind of just started and don't think about it. Okay, so there we go. Okay. So once it loads, you have, um, it'll say supercharger Newark, Delaware. I have my nav also as my heads up display. Um, and you can see it gives you uh, the first route to the first supercharger. So right now I think the other problem is I just realized I have a avoid tolls in here. So let's go into settings and uh, we can go ahead and turn avoid tolls back off. I think that might have been throwing it for a loop. Okay, so if we remove that, this may or may not update. Okay, so this did just update. As you can see, it now goes through the tunnel rather than around 695 in Baltimore. Um, so here, now we're at Newark, Delaware with 30% battery. Uh, we'll get there at 6.07 p.m. Uh, it'll it tells us to charge for 30 minutes, and we'll get to first shoot at 8.33 p.m. with 15% uh, battery. So if you hit begin trip, it pretty much starts right away. Um, and it gives you a turn by turn here. And this is leading up to Newark, New Jersey. Um, let's see. If you want to see more of these, you can just simply scroll down the list and it will take you to Newark and uh, Newark, Newark. I think it's Newark. Newark, Newark, New Jersey, Newark, Delaware. I don't know, something like that. Anyways, you can see that there's this little dotted line. There's more things in between for nav, but it will take you to the first supercharger and then just tell you, okay, this is your final stop. You can also hit remove charging stops if you either know where you're going. Um, so you can do this and it will recalculate. Okay, so that was fairly quick. Um, if we go ahead and uh, scroll down, keep going. So let's say, see, now we're getting there, negative 13%. It warned you charging needed to reach destina destination. So let's, um, let's go ahead and add charging stops. 
Now it's gonna redo the search. So it clearly does take a little while to uh, add those supercharging stops in there. That's usually why when it's longer trips, it's not a big deal. You kind of just hit the road. It'll load within, you know, a couple minutes. I don't know if this is typical also even for the brand new Teslas that come out. I don't know how long this would take to charge, so I don't really have a point of reference. It doesn't really bother me, and I've never really thought twice about it until I'm doing this video now. Um, so, you know, it, it, it loads. It just, I guess, may take a while. Um, I also think sometimes when you're moving, it, uh, it will load a little bit faster, but that didn't take too long, maybe a minute or so at most. And you know, you have everything and you can just go ahead and hit begin trip and we're good to go. Um, now, for example, let's look at some of the animations to see how quickly it responds. So if you just swipe this up, it zooms in and gives you, gives you another level and that's how quickly the screen re-renders. Um, and then again, if we just wanna start rendering things while the nav is open, this will probably be as slow as it gets. Um, so for example, if we come down here, we can load this mini menu. You can see the animations are very quick. Here's the, the music, again, very quick. If we swipe up to make this bigger, what we can do is we can go down to search. Let's search and see how long that takes. So this comes up and then we're given a search box. If we just wanna say like, um, let's say rock, and we can hit enter, uh, loading, okay, and then it loads. So that was that was also very quickly. Let's go ahead and load a station. Let's just do slacker rock, and it's up. It's not quite playing it, now it's playing. I have the volume turned all the way down just because of copyright stuff, as you can see, the volume's off, but you can see that it is, it is playing. So that was obviously very quick as well. Let's go back to like owner favorites, um, and It's now playing. So it's it's not terribly bad. Also the animations, pretty quick. Um, all of this stuff. As you can see, I still have the, uh, the issue with uh, clicking some of the buttons, but it doesn't hinder the performance of the screen at all. So I can always, you know, go in here, go here, go heated seats, all off vents turn the vents off go back ac ac off auto turned off all the way um, we have the front heaters as you can see the, the responsiveness is very good very quick um, it feels you know it feels nice it feels natural it doesn't take that long that honestly took the longest um, that we've seen if i tap it again it goes away but you can see there's a slight animation to it sometimes um, but either way I wouldn't say there's anything drastic in the in, in the lag or anything. If you're if you're deciding as to whether or not to get a newer model based on how slow the touchscreen is, I think the final thing is that I don't think the lag is an issue whatsoever. I've never had an issue with it. Every now and then, I might have had the screen freeze on me once or twice and had issues. And when that happens, you just hold down both scroll wheels, it resets the main uh, touchscreen, and you're good to go. Um, now, when I first got the car, I did not know that, and I kind of freaked out a little bit and was like, what's going on with my car? How do I fix this? Is it broken? I'm not gonna be able to unlock it because I can't access the touchscreen. Um, I just did a simple Google search, found a, a Tesla uh, forum, and, and found that that was a solution. You just hold down both scroll wheels, you're good to go, it resets it. Um, so that's obviously a simple fix, but just clicking through a lot of these things, let's just go through these menus real quick suspension lights driving I mean it's it's very responsive so there's really not much lag at all you do have some animation and and even oops sorry uh, you do have some animation and even these are quick um, but you know as we as we tap through these screens it obviously changes very quickly and real time for the most part obviously you can get ahead of it a little bit but I'd say that this is very responsive you know you have these nice animations on here um, and you know everything does work very smoothly uh, so I haven't had any issues and then even this screen up here if, if we go ahead and press this navigate to New York City I mean that's pretty quick honestly as far as voice to hear and being accurate 
and then you know we can just come in hit navigate let's see how long it takes to load this is probably the longest and I think that's because it's trying to calculate battery percentage driving style uh, where superchargers are along the route etc etc how many miles it is it doesn't want you to have too low of a battery so there's a lot of things that it has to consider and um, so that's that's probably what takes the longest honestly but this doesn't really have anything to do with like screen lag it's more of like running a calculation so I, I don't think there's any huge issues as far as lag goes with the main touchscreen with the uh, the driver's dash on the Model S. Mine is a 2014 and um, well I am running uh, version 9.0 and uh, my, my phone app is on like 3.8 I think. So if we go up to this Tesla T and tap that, this comes up. As you can see down here we're running version 9.0. So we have version 9.0 right here. You can click on the owner's manual, which is, did I tap that? I might have, there we go. So this brings up the owner's manual. If we go into here, we can do overview, interior overview. I don't know how big of a file this owner's manual is, but it clearly does take a little bit to set up, but this also walks through all of the car. You can scroll through this, but I would still say that for the most part everything is very responsive they have these nice sliding animations you can zoom in on the touch screen um, if anything the maps would probably take the longest to render but still it's it's fairly quick and the way I think about it is if you tap on a button you're probably glancing down from driving looking back up and in those two seconds that you tap the button look back up to check the road and then relook at here or if you're looking back and forth like it doesn't need to be immediate um, and it's it really is is nice and fast I, I don't have any issues with it if the new cars are immediate I would be very impressed um, which they could be if you're on a 4g network I guess the uh, maps could load faster uh, it could calculate the routes faster potentially because it could get the data quicker you know, I don't really know what goes into calculating this stuff, but I think overall there's no issues with the lag on these touch screens and they are fantastic. Um, I know that sometimes eh, we're not even going to get into whether or not they go bad and how often because I honestly have no idea. So hopefully my touch screen stays good for a while. Anyways, uh, I, I hope that sort of answers, um, you know, how, how laggy the touch screens potentially are. But as you can see, I don't really think they're that laggy. They're, they're pretty good for for at this point four to five year old technology for a touchscreen so i'd say props to you tesla and and well done and uh keep up the good work but uh i think i think the viewer commented they were deciding between a 2014 and 15 tesla i don't know if that was a 2014 or 15 versus a new one or a 14 versus 15 because i think the 14 and 15s are going to be exactly the same as far as the technology however the newer cars could potentially have like faster processors or RAM or I don't know what goes into these touchscreens um, so maybe the, the brand new ones could uh, process things faster even like a 16 or 17 model um, with like the refreshed front fascia and all that stuff maybe there's actually new hardware in the car um, to make everything faster I don't know though um, but if you're looking at an old Tesla I wouldn't let the touchscreen being slightly slower be a hindrance because I have no issues with the touchscreen I think it's fantastic it gets everything done and it's not like I'm sitting there for five minutes waiting for something to load so um, if you find a cheaper 2014 and the only thing standing in your way is that it's you know a second slower than a new a new test a new Tesla and you know it's half the price I would definitely go for the 2014 um, just I, I I've never even thought twice about whether or not my touch screen is slow. So I would say that fantastic car, go for it. And uh, well, if you're getting a new one though, referral link, I don't know if you can use a referral link for an, a used car or not, but either way, if you want to, there's a referral link in the description. Um, I know on new cars, on Model S, X, and 3, you get six months of free unlimited supercharging if you use the referral link. So feel free to use that. So I guess that's it for today. Um, like and subscribe, uh, subscription button, bottom your bottom right, but it's, I think it's down there, right down there. Anyways, uh, yeah, that'll that'll wrap up today's video. So, thanks for watching.
guys, check it out. We got a Rolls Royce sitting at the Mercedes. Oh, they just had to pull up and block the shot. But there's a Rolls Royce sitting at the Mercedes dealer.